music and culture played in the civil rights movement. I mean, I think that, that music really is the profile of the civil rights movement. And a lot of people who might not have um, otherwise been connected to the cause became connected to it through music and culture and songs like that that everyone might sing or it, you know, it might have been, um, you know, an African-American musician uh, that people connected to that made them more sympathetic to African American causes. Uh, I think it's it's often that way that um, that people connect to others because of 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 who they see um, because they see them you know in the world of of music and and culture. Back in the time of the civil rights movement. Arts and entertainment played an extremely vital role in the mental and emotional well-being of the people. Music, art, theater, and more brought joy to people's lives, allowing them to enjoy themselves throughout their social suffering. For example, African American spirituals, gospel, and folk music all played an important role in the civil rights movement. Singers and musicians collaborated with song collectors to spread songs to activists, both at large meetings and through newspapers. They sang these songs for various purposes, one being to motivate them through long marches. Other purposes were for, for psychological strength against harassment and brutality, and sometimes to simply pass the time when waiting for something to happen. Not only music, but also television played a crucial role in the civil rights movement. Many people think that national television news on the civil rights movement helped change the United States by showing Americans the violence of segregation and the true struggle that African Americans were fighting daily for their rights. Lena Mary Calhoun Horn, born on June 30th of 1917, died on May 9th, 2010, was an African-American singer, dancer, actress, and civil rights activist. Her career was 70 years long. She appeared in film, television, and theater. Horn joined the chorus of the Cotton Club at the age of 16 and became a nightclub performer before moving to Hollywood, where she had small parts in numerous movies. The older she grew, the more substantial parts she got, such as in the 1943 films Cabin in the Sky and Stormy Weather. Because of the Red Scare, hysteria over the perceived threat posed by communists in the U.S., and her political activism, Horn found herself blacklisted and therefore unable to get work in Hollywood. Also, Miss Horn marched with Martin Luther King in the March on Washington because she was a very interested activist. Alex Haley was an African-American writer who interviewed many civil rights activists. Haley went to college in Mississippi. In 1939, he left college to join the Coast Guard during World War II. When he enlisted, he bought a portable typewriter onto the ship he was assigned to. With the typewriter, Haley wrote articles and short stories to send to magazines and publishers. Many of the magazines and publishers rejected his wishes to have his writing published, but some did not. In January 1965, right after Martin Luther King Jr. won the Nobel Peace Prize, MLK gave the longest interview he had ever given to the press. King talked about the civil rights movement and his role in it. He talked extensively about his childhood, how he became aware of racial prejudice, and how he became a civil rights leader. King also spoke about his anger to towards the church and white religious leaders. During the interview, Haley asked King about the role of music in the civil rights movement. He commented, We Shall Overcome has become the unofficial song and slogan of the civil rights movement. Then he asked, Do you consider such an inspirational anthem important to moral? Martin Luther King was fine. Songs are the soul of the movement. For the same reason the slave sang, Negroes today sing freedom songs. But we too are in bondage. We sing out our determination that we shall overcome blacks and whites together. We shall overcome someday. Do you think 
Pete Seeger's word, Pete Seeger would have thought about MLK's words. The life that Pete Seeger lived was exact, exactly in line with what, with what Martin Luther King was saying. That, that Pete Seeger thought that the way to bring people together around a cause was, was through music. Um, so I, yeah, I think that's, that's exactly the person that he was. I think, I think he thought that the way to make change was to bring people together through music. Um, so I think he, he agreed with completely. <laughs>